Okay. Are you ready to hear me yap for about 10, 15 minutes? Let's go ahead and continue our journey. Okay, where are we? The tunnel wasn't long. Oh, remember, we were traveling underwater and then we found this tunnel. We were swimming and we found some light at this tunnel, so we swam through it. Let's see what we found. The tunnel wasn't long, but it led to one of the most beautiful sights I'd seen in my life. The isolated pool held a denser, warmer water that cast dancing reflections all over the walls. It felt like a bath at the perfect temperature. I don't know, I like mine pretty hot. My guess is that the area was saturated with salt as we could lie, fully supported in comforting, rocking arms of azure. And let me clarify, I don't take baths. I like hot showers. This could actually be paradise. Uh, we should just stay here forever, she uttered faily. Wow. Kira gently maneuvered herself closer to me so that we were lying side by side, watching the clouds together. There they are. Looks like I need to go home and get my glasses. Oh. Self-contained masses of water floating high above us in the sky. Seems pretty amazing when you think about it, Kira pondered. When I was growing up, I was told that clouds are formed by fish that have escaped the sea. Well, someone was lying to you, Kira. I remember thinking, this doesn't make sense to me. Why would a fish want to escape the sea? That's like you wanting to jump in the ocean. Oh, you did jump in the ocean. <clears throat> Apparently, if they swim as fast as they can towards the seabed, then career, career sharply upwards. Yeah, I like when fish go to college, you know, get, get themselves on their career uh, path. Uh, the thin... I'm losing interest. Oh, look at this. There's a fish. So when they leap out of the sea and spread their fins as wide as they can, they simply carry on traveling in the angle they left the water until eventually they reach the sky. Apparently whales inhabit the largest clouds, but I don't believe that a bit. Uh, that's, uh, and you believe the rest? I teased. I want to. So what happens to the fish when there's lightning then and hailstorms? I asked playfully. Carrie looked over at me and bit her bottom lip. Feigning worry, we both chuckled. We lay there comfortably roasting in the bright sun, soaking in the warm atmosphere with tranquility extending time until inevitably the sun began to set. It's getting late, uh, Kira muttered disappointedly. We should head back. Yeah, look at that. The sun's going down. Uh, the sea glowed a beautiful rich color as the sun bestowed a last burst of energy upon it, <clears throat> longing that it would be enough to survive its cold, unforgiving lunar mistress. Jeez. Kira reached the shore before me and, crouching down, pushed her fists into the wet sand, using them to hoist herself up. She walked towards our blanket, the fading sun twinkling off her wet body. She looked over her shoulder at me as I clumsily cl clambered, clambered <clears throat> out of the salty expanse, not focusing on my coordination. Kira was, sat on the, Kira was sat on the blanket with her legs to one side when I finally caught up. Water dripped from her face as she smiled warmly at me. Here... I offered, holding out a towel. She leaned closer, put her hand on the towel as if to take it, but didn't. Our faces now only inches apart. You know what I've been thinking? When we're young, we're taught not to trust our own judgment and to second-guess everything we do. I've come to realize that there's no reason to live in fear of our convictions. If you can't trust yourself, then how can you expect to trust anything? <clears throat> okay. I have firm beliefs, and I know what I'm doing is right may feel difficult superficially, but I have a job to do for a greater good. That being said, I regret that I chose you. What? Kara leaned closer and kissed me. The moment I had pined for since the very second I laid my unmarried, no, unmarred eyes on her. I instantly lost myself in a wave of endorphins and dolphins. I'd never felt more alive, more detached from this world, yet there was a tinge of emptiness, an emptiness that was rapidly growing. I opened my eyes to see the characteristic green of her irises seep out of their confines. I knew she was draining my essence. I could feel my soul leaving, yet I couldn't move. I didn't want to move. I passed out. Is this like Twilight? Is this what Twilight's about? <clears throat> Oh, 
Oh, look, got an achievement. I was coaxed out of the darkness by the rough lapping of the life-giving ocean, accompanied by an exhausted yet still desperate sobbing. It was the latter that truly woke me. I could, I could feel it resonate deep within me. Her pain was now my pain. No, it had always been. Even before our fated encounter, I slowly opened my eyes to see a scene very different from the one I left behind. Uh, bathed in the sad, pale light of the large full moon, <clears throat> which watched us eagerly not far above the horizon, Kira was sat cradling her knees. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm getting all choked up with this story. Kira? I attempted hoarsely. See? The sobbing stopped instantly. Now only the waves remained. She darted her head in my direction and gazed intensely into my eyes, as if trying to solve a complex puzzle. Her now conventional dulled eyes stood out even more than normal from her tear-stained, disheveled visage. Or maybe it's just because I'd seen what they were capable of. Either way, her gaze consumed me completely. I could see she was falling, failing to solve the puzzle as tears began to form once again. Kira looked out to sea as she tried to gulp them down. I wasn't strong enough. I couldn't do it. Her voice was hoarse, barely a whisper. I'm ready to accept my fate. Kira closed her eyes for a few seconds, trying to compose herself. I wonder if she's a mermaid. Opening them gained her focus. Her speech was much clearer now. I was not born of the earth like you. I'm the embodiment of the sea, the daughter of celestial beings. I've been conscious for millennia. The moon flickered in her eyes as she moved her gaze farther out to sea. I was left to watch over a mass far greater than the soil humans inhabit, and to protect and nourish a far broader range of creatures. Left completely alone, I strangled with this unimaginable burden, a struggle made harder by your selfish race. From constant pollution to farming entire species to death, as time progressed like a thriving plague, you only brought more destruction. I watched you fervently, trying to dissect what made you behave in such a way, as my frustration at the lack of rightful reasons grew, so did my fascination. I realized I possessed similar traits to your kind, buried somewhere deep within me, not needing to be displayed, so therefore remaining hidden. The connection I felt became an obsession, one that was deeply intertwined with loathing. With that, she clutched her hands to her heart as if in pain. Following Kira's gaze, I focused my attention on the sedate waves. The reflection of the moon seemed to be trying its best to stay together, but was constantly distorted by lightly spitting rain. I wonder if this was a metaphor for Kira. Hey, did it start raining? I didn't notice that earlier. Uh, man, I'm getting into this. <laughs> I was approached by a forgotten ancient and offered the chance to become human, to walk amongst you. In return, I had no problem seducing and sacrificing one human soul to the shadowed apparition every lunar cycle. Turns out I don't have the strength to fulfill my oath this time. I felt Kira realign her gaze in my direction. She smiled gently. Thank you, Moon. I thought I knew what it meant to be human, but I realize now I never truly did, and I wouldn't trade the gift you've given me for the world. Kira's voice cracked. I love you. <clears throat> I numbly turned to meet her gaze. I just wish I'd realized it sooner, and now my only wish is that one day you'll be able to forgive me. Kira? I mouthed soundlessly. She crawled towards me, tears streaming down her face. Still smiling, Kira put her finger over my lips before her hair was slung wildly towards the sea by a sudden gush of unending wind. Is it raining harder? The waves became ferocious as they tried to claw her in, and the rain heavier, wearing the whole scene down, determined to let her warmth penetrate through any mistrust she'd created. Kira didn't flinch once as her legs began to float skywards, gently lifting the rest of her body. She's a kite! Oh. <clears throat> Without moving her finger, she leant toward, uh, forward and kissed me on the cheek. I felt her warm, salty tears run down the side of my face, expressing what I was unable to. She was hurled suddenly backwards towards the sea, the bracelet I hadn't once seen her without. What? The bracelet I hadn't once seen her without since that day on the rocks, which now seemed like a lifetime ago, was torn off her wrist and left at my feet. Kira looked terrified, reaching out towards it as she was forced away. Seeing her face like that was a stab in the heart, one that would leave a deep scar. Silhouetted in front of the full moon, every aspect of her body fought wildly against his fate. Kira violently burst into the water that was her everything. The lifeless droplets shimmered in the moonlight as they reluctantly fell to the illuminated sea. Now indistinguishable from the rain, the sea, the water that, was, that will sustain me and my children. 
She will follow me always under the same blue sky. Oh. Hmm. Uh, Jessica Jones. <laughs> Have you tried exploring the title screen? You never know, it may hold a secret. This tale has been passed down from generation to generation. Religeneration. As long as anyone around here can remember, I first heard it myself. A Kimmy. Uh, it was Christmas, and there was an island and a good home for owls. What? Why am I asking you this for now? Tommy was without his parents, and he didn't have any fresh or bread. What is this? Tommy called. Mummy! Daddy! He tried again, desperate, welling up in his eyes. As more time passed and shops began to close, he found it harder to cry. Crying in his sleeve, he saw the old man. <clears throat> Colonel Sanders brought him a bucket of chicken. Did you bring me mashed potatoes? I also have corn. And the biscuits? And green beans. I brought it all just for you. Thank you, old man, but I'm not supposed to take food from strangers. I'm not a stranger. I've been around since the 70s. You have? Yes, I am the Colonel. Colonel Sanders. And he lives on this island. During this time away, he learned about all the owls. And I'm sure you know owls have small brains. Sometimes I use owls instead of chickens. But Kentucky Fried Owl just doesn't have the same ring as Kentucky Fried Chicken does. You're right, old man! In fact, my secret recipe was carried, was delivered to me on a parchment of paper, delivered from an old white owl with green eyes. I now keep that owl in a purple cage full of stained glass. You do? Yes. He is my special owl. I change the newspapers in his cage twice a day. Once with the morning news, the other with the evening news. He's the most up-to-date owl when it comes to news. Tommy had no idea that owls don't eat seeds. Thank you, Kimmy. All right. And that is always the same blue sky. I had no idea I was going to read the whole story. I was reading it as a joke. I mean, whatever. I'm going to mark that off as one game complete. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, can I save? Customize? Continue? I guess I can't. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. How was that? Uh, we, we read, we completed this whole thing. Um, I'm just impressed with myself. <laughs> See ya!